Hi everybody! So this is going to be my labor and delivery video and I know a lot of people uh, make a footage of their labor video and then a video of them talking about their labor but I'm going to put both of those videos into one. So I'll be talking about my labor and delivery and I will insert clips of my labor and delivery here and there. Alright, so here's my story. So they called me in for 8.30 that night to get induced, and I was induced with Cervidil. And the Cervidil, I was just thinking, would be like a little thing that they insert into your area. But it was quite the process in getting it in, because they have to get it right up against your cervix. So it was quite the process getting it in. It was very uncomfortable getting it in. But once it was in, it was fine. You didn't feel it or anything. So what that does is put the hormone uh, progesterone right onto your cervix and then it will soften your cervix. That's what it's meant to do. The doctor left me around 8.30 at night saying um, sometimes this puts you into labor, most of the time it doesn't, so I'll see you in the morning and we'll start your oxytocin drip. So I went to sleep that night. The nurses turned off our lights and we went to sleep thinking we're going to sleep through the night. And a half an hour later, I was having contractions. Um, they weren't hard contractions, but they were regular. And so I woke up my husband and said, I can't, I'm not able to sleep through these contractions. I thought I was going to sleep through the night, and I wasn't able to. Um, they weren't that painful. They were just not letting me sleep. So they offered me Demerol to sleep through the night. And I was just like, they're already offering me drugs. I mean, Demerol, like, that's a pretty strong drug to just help me sleep. So, I said no to that. Then the contractions started getting worse and worse and closer together. So, I'm still at this point not sure. Like, I don't know, I was in denial because I waited so long to have this baby. I was in denial that I was having contractions. So... I was just, I didn't tell the nurse, I didn't tell anybody, except for my husband, I thought that I was having contractions, and he was just like, alright, well let me know how, how it goes. And they were getting closer and closer together, so me and my husband started timing them, and still haven't told the nurse, and then when we started timing them, we realized that they were three to five minutes apart, and reg very, very regular, so then we were like, maybe they are contractions. So then we told the nurse that I think I'm having contractions. So after she monitored me for about 10 minutes and I asked her like, okay, are these real contractions? She's like, yes, these are actual contractions. So I was like, okay, so now I'm in the mindset of not sleeping through the night and waiting to the morning. Now I'm in the mindset, I'm in labor, so let's start laboring. Um, at this point, they've, they're starting to hurt and they're like three to five minutes apart. So I started laboring and I sat on the uh, birthing ball and bounced for a little bit. <laughs> All gone? No baby? Mm. And um, every method, every natural method of pain relief that I used worked um, until my contractions got more and more intense. Then I'd have to find something else to do. So the birthing ball worked for probably an hour and then my contractions got um, stronger. So I had to find something else to relieve the pain because the birthing ball wasn't working anymore because the contractions had intensified. So then my husband asked me if I wanted to try the tub and I was ready to jump in the tub so we filled it up and I got in and the tub um, relieved so much pressure. Floating and not sitting on anything was amazing. So I stayed in the tub for probably 45 <laughs> minutes um, and then my contractions intensified again. So then the nurse came in and she checked my contractions and she sat there for a while monitoring my contractions and now they were two minutes apart and they were pretty painful like getting really bad. I couldn't talk through them, I couldn't focus through them, I couldn't do anything. So she then she turned on the jets which 
Me and my husband didn't even think to turn the jets on. How are you feeling? This is the best thing that ever happened to labor. Yeah? Um, in between contractions, I felt fantastic. Like, I felt like I wasn't even in labor. So that lasted for probably an hour. So I was probably in the tub for an hour and 45 minutes um, all together. Like, at first I didn't have the jets, then I had the jets. And then the jet stopped working because my contractions intensified again. So the nurse told me that I was starting to scare her, that the Cervidil was working a little too well because for the last two or two and a half hours I was having two minute apart contractions. And they were getting harder and harder and harder to manage. So. I got out of the tub and she took out the Cervidil. At that point, I the contractions went back to three to five minutes apart and I was worried that the labor was going to slow down and stop and I asked her if it was going to slow down or stop and she said it might and um, so then I got discouraged but it didn't. It didn't stop at all. It got more and more intense. She checked me and I was only like two centimeters at this point. This is like maybe two in the morning. So I, have, I hadn't had any drugs at this point at all, and um, the contractions were getting worse, and then just time went by, and I wasn't able to sleep between contractions. It got pretty bad. I was doing my controlled breathing with my husband, and uh, that was getting me through the contractions and everything, and the nurse sat with me for about the next three hours. Um, timing my contractions. She was with me like the whole night with her hand on my stomach feeling the contractions and helping me through the contractions. And we have another contraction. Just keep breathing. Just breathe. And uh, they were, they went back to two minutes apart for three hours through the night. So now we're probably at five in the morning, five, five thirty in the morning. And they were so intense, she offered me laughing gas, and I said yes right away. Because I used laughing gas with Jasmine, and it helped, and I needed something to take the edge off. So I said yes, give me the laughing gas, I need something. Get some laughing gas there? This just gives just a little bit relief that I need, and oh, I think I can fall asleep now. Much better than an epidural. We'll let you fall asleep then. I wouldn't say it relieved pain because when I had a contraction, it was still very painful. But in between the contractions, it, there was only two minutes in between the contractions. But I felt like it was I had a ten-minute nap between each contraction, and I was like dreaming in between each contraction. I was out cold and. Uh, I just kept saying to the nurse, I couldn't imagine how much this would hurt if I wasn't on the laughing gas because it still hurt so much on the laughing gas. I was like, I couldn't imagine how much it would hurt without the laughing gas. So I had laughing gas all the way up until I was um, ready to push. And uh, some point in there, because I was sleeping so much between the contractions, I don't remember. The doctor was in there and he's all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'm going to break your water. And I'm like, oh, like, where did you come from? Because I was half asleep. But, um, so he broke my water and then, you know, when you break your water, things intensify quickly. So at that point I had gone to eight centimeters and this is probably like seven in the morning now, seven or eight in the morning. And, um, so... I was 8 centimeters, he broke my water, and I felt the urge to push, and I wanted to push so bad. I was telling the nurse, 
I need to push, I have to push, like my body was just pushing already and she's like, you can't, you can't push because you're not 10 centimeters yet. So I was trying my hardest to fight the contraction and fight the urge to push, which is hard to do when like all that pressure is coming down on you. But I did it and um, I went from 8 to 10 centimeters in no time, like, and then when it came time to push, I couldn't push, <laughs> I had no energy. I was in so much pain. I wasn't allowed to have the laughing gas while I was pushing. So we did a practice push and the baby came down like almost all the way. And uh, she was like, okay doctor, like she's ready to push. She's 10 centimeters. She just pushed and the baby came down really far. Like we're ready for you. And so he came over and um, the next push um, pushed the baby like right to the edge of just about to come out and these pushes were like it hurt so bad to push I only did four pushes and the baby was like coming out so the second push he came like right to the edge the third push I got his head out and then I was like I can't push anymore like this hurts so bad and uh, the doctor um, told the nurses that um, he needed to get the baby out like something was wrong and what happened was the baby's shoulders were stuck because he was 10 days late and he got really big so he did this like super pelvic push thing where the nurses like pulled my knees all the way back which hurt like hell and then the doctor like kind of pushed on, on my stomach and pulled the baby out all in one shot. That's how the baby came out. I was just, at the end I was doing one constant push. Like I wasn't doing a push. I was just doing a slow, steady, constant push to help them like, you know, get him out. And the doctor did that pelvic push thing and he got the baby, pulled the baby out. They put the baby on me right away and he was very, very blue, very purple. And uh, it was a little bit scary because he was like that for a while and it was, Jasmine came out like, she turned pink like that, so I wasn't, I've never experienced a blue baby. And um, so they did all the sucky things, got all the sucky out, and got all the gook out. And they shook him, they toweled him off and shook him a lot, and then um, they took him away. Like they took him to the table to get him breathing. And they did, he, they got him breathing, and then he was back to me in like less than five minutes, and he was just looking around. He didn't cry or anything, he was just looking around like, oh, this is where I'm going to live now, huh? And he was so awake and alert and just content with being awake. <laughs> so that is my labor and delivery story. It was intense. It was so much worse than Jasmine's labor and delivery, but I didn't tear this time at all. Yay for me. Uh, he's breastfeeding like a champ, which Jasmine didn't do. He wasn't jaundiced, which Jasmine was very, very jaundiced. So Jasmine's labor and delivery was a lot easier, and the aftermath was really bad. But this one, the labor and delivery was really hard, and the aftermath was really good. So I was able to come home the next day, and we've been great ever since and now I will show you my baby there he is the star of the show he's just absolutely perfect in every way he looks his complexion is so clear his eyes are very white no yellow on him and Jasmine loves her brother don't you you love your brother yeah yeah. Oh, he's moved. He's probably going to want to eat soon. He's been sleeping for a while. Oh, stretches. Stretches, stretches. Good boy. We are absolutely in love with him. He is such a good baby. He is fussier than Jasmine was. He's got a little temper on him, but he is just precious. Yeah. So that is my story. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.